lot more complex than uh, um, just two quarters of consecutive negative growth. Uh, um, the, the National Bureau of Economic Statistics is the one that actually uh, declares recessions. They, they don't just look at GDP, they look at job growth and a lot of other things. Unfortunately, on the state level, state-based numbers, most of them are, are quarterly or annually. So there's not a good agreed upon definition by economists as to what a recession is for a state. Uh, generally what they do is they look at job growth and everything we're seeing uh, uh, points to Arizona is in a recession and we've been in a recession since the end of last year. Oh, yeah. The reason I said your, your prior chart, which is Arizona, I didn't see the, the gray band yet showing that. It's Arizona because it hasn't been declared yet. These are, these are national recessions. The gray oh, bands are, are when we had national okay. recessions. So it gives you a frame of reference so that you can remember, okay, I remember the, you know, 91, 92. I remember, you know, going all the way back. And, and this is what we were doing at those times. Um, and, and that's important that, you know, context is everything. You can look at numbers, but if you don't know their context, it doesn't uh, um, necessarily tell you as much. So housing and construction looks like this right now. Uh, um, you know, this is uh, uh, the subprime uh, high rate ninja loans. Do you know what, uh, what ninja loans were? Those were no income, no job, no assets. Sure, we'll give you a loan anyway. Um, and that was, there was a lot of that going on. Uh, they are subprime as well. Um, and these high rate uh, uh, subprime loans, they no longer exist. You can't get one now. But there are a lot of those that still have them. And uh, here in Arizona, 47% of the subprime high rate loans have yet to reset. They have not had their reset. And on top of that, uh, um, we have probably one of the largest shares of part of this housing problem in the nation. Um, one third of all loans issued in 2005 and 2006 were high rate loans. So one third of all mortgages that were issued in Arizona. Yes. Did the state of Arizona actually get into on the spending? No. Uh, at the at the treasurer's, I can't speak for the retirement systems because they're managed separately by their own boards. But in the treasurer's office, no, we did not get into civs. We did not get into CDOs, any of these subprime uh, types of assets. Uh, we avoided that. And when I took office back in January of 2007. Um, they were, uh, the office had, had been going through some problems. You may have read about it. My predecessor was indicted and resigned, and you know, I won't go into all of that detail. But needless to say, they'd had 182% turnover. And so when I got there, they were down to just one person in the trading room managing at the time what was an $11 billion portfolio. Um, and that's just too much for one person to do. So I immediately, we hired two additional uh, traders. Uh, one of, both of them used to work for the treasurer's office and had left, and we attracted them back. Uh, the thing about it is we didn't let them trade right away. What we did is we had them go through the entire portfolio and make sure we didn't have any of these in there. Now, this is January of 2007. Not, the credit crunch didn't start till August. So we went through our portfolio, and even the mortgage-backed uh, uh, securities that we did own that were supposed to be all prime loans, the good ones, we pulled the paperwork on them, and it's about 350 pages for one security of single lines of individual mortgages. <clears throat> Had them go through the entire thing and make sure that every mortgage was a prime mortgage. And we actually found one security that was bought that was sold as prime only. Out of 350 pages, we found a dozen that were not. They were uh, not prime. Uh, they, were, they weren't subprime, but they weren't uh, prime either. And so we now took them off our approval list. We won't buy from them anymore because they were not honest about what was in there. So we literally scrubbed our portfolio. Just to give you an example, the state used to have $200 million worth of bonds in Countrywide. Uh, Tim White, who's my, uh, I promoted to chief investment officer for the room, he'd started bringing down that exposure because he saw, hey, this is a housing bubble. It's going to burst at some point. So he started bringing down that exposure. By the time I took office, we were down to $86 million in bonds. And I said, yeah, this is exactly the right thing to do. We need to start getting out of that area because the bubble will burst. By the time the credit crunch hit in August, we were down to one $10 million bond that matured in a couple, uh, matured last November. So we basically had moved ourselves completely out of this. As a result, we actually made a lot of money during the credit crunch 
because we were, had the portfolio that everybody else wanted at that point. So we actually did very well uh, um, in the month of August when everybody else was having trouble and losing money. It's one of the reasons why we had so much growth in our LJIP funds. In fact, we were even getting inquiries from other states in that where they were, their LJIP funds did get into the, the subprime market uh, saying, can, can we invest over here because you're doing so well? And we said, no, we're, we're limited to governments in the state of Arizona or have a nexus in the state of Arizona. So when we continue here, Arizona construction employment. Look at this, this is a, a sobering slide. This, you can see very clearly where the bubble burst in construction. And this, we've never seen a drop like this, either in, in number or magnitude in the history of the state. And uh, so this is, this is depressionary for that particular segment. I mean, you talk to folks in, in the housing industry, they're talking, you know, of 20 year employees, they're now looking at laying off in some cases because things are so tough. Yes. You're actually getting ahead of me on the, on the presentation. That's exactly right. Uh, um, uh, we, th this growth rate was just not sustainable. What was happening was uh, um, you had uh, uh, a lot of folks. Well, actually, let me, get, let me get to that slide. I actually can show this very well. Um, one thing to note about this slide, look at how many jobs we've lost in, in construction. But we still haven't had much of a drop off in statewide uh, um, job, uh, uh, non-farm jobs. What that means is even though this sector is really hurting, we're still creating jobs in other sectors that's made it to where it's almost a net no loss in jobs for the state. And so what's that, and that's where you see a lot of it. I mean, we all probably know somebody who used to be a realtor who's now selling cars or, you know, doing, you know, waiting tables or doing something else. I mean, you know, they, they, they move into other fields and that's what's happening. They can still find, uh, I know my mortgage broker who I've used for years on my own personal mortgage. I just got a mailer from today. He's working at a Toyota dealership. So, uh, um, you know, but that's the type of thing that's going on. They're getting other jobs. Uh, um, it, it, and th at least we're still creating that, and that's, like, that's helping things a bit. Uh, this is the national existing single-family home sales. And you can see, again, look at the jump up through the bubble. Not as, not as sharp as what we've seen in Arizona, uh, but still very much of a bubble. And this is the, the drop that we've been seeing. Now, this is interesting. Are we finding the bottom right here at, at, at the very end? Or is this just a blip because it's the summer buying season? I mean, these numbers are, are a couple months delayed because they have to tabulate the data and such. So you're looking at the beginning of the summer. That's the busiest time for home sales because people want to move prior to school starting. So is that just artificially keeping things from dropping? And so we're going to be watching very closely the August and September numbers that will come out in October will tell us, OK, are we continuing the slide or have we started to find the bottom in, in this area? Have you factored, factored in illegal immigration into the job market? Good question. What about illegal immigration in the job market? The, when, when you look at employment numbers and unemployment numbers, you're looking at those who are documented. You can't claim unemployment unless you were legally employed. Well, there's a possibility a lot of these jobs really haven't gone away. They're just not, not documented. Well, it, it, that's actually why you're seeing a bigger impact on like sales tax revenues in, in some towns because you know although those people weren't documented, they're not getting unemployment, they're not showing up in these statistics, they were still part of the economy. They're still buying TVs and, or well, they were buying TVs, they were going to the store, they were going out to eat. Uh, and so that was part of the overall economy and it's gone now. And, and you know, there's a lot of debate as what's really caused the, the reduction in illegal immigration. Is it, you know, the employer sanctions law? Is it uh, uh, the housing industry? It's really both. And in, in my opinion, it's more to do with the economy than anything else. Because think about it from uh, the employer's perspective. If you're having trouble, who's the first person you let go? The guy you're paying cash for the day. You know, you don't fire your longer term employees until you have to. And that's what we're seeing. We saw in the earlier construction job number that it kind of it, it, it was flat for a bit and then started to drop off. And that was I'm sure some of those were, were the ones you don't see that were the first to go. Yes. Uh, 